So to see how any of those strings make the algorithm behave, uh, let's have a closer look at it. The first three lines here are independent of the structure of the input. So if you look at them, the counter is set to zero, we go through a range, and then we look if the letter that we're currently at is an A. Those are independent of what kind of string we're looking at. We'll always be executing these parts of the code. But for those two parts here, that's kind of different. So this line here, which is the fourth line, so this line here will only be executed if we have encountered an A, and this line here will only be executed if we have encountered an A, then the next character is a B. So how often these two lines here are executed is dependent on the structure of the input. Now, in a worst case input, we would want these two lines to get executed as often as possible, and in a best case scenario, we would want them to get executed the least possible number of times. So what we can already say is that a best case input will cause these two lines here to never be called. And that only happens if the string does not contain the letter A at all, which is the one down here. So for the other strings, let's just go through the algorithm and count how many times this line here is executed and how many times this, this line down here is executed. So if the string looks like A, B, A, B, A, B, and so on, then every time that the algorithm encounters an A, it will execute this line down here, and it will also execute this line down here, because the next letter is a B. Now, when it encounters a B, it will not execute this line, and it will not execute this line. Then it encounters an A again, so this line will be executed, and this line will be executed. Then again, those two won't be. Then we have them both again. Then zero times, and so on. So basically, for every two letters that it encounters, it will execute these two lines. So two lines per two letters makes one extra line per letter. Now, for the second string, what happens is this. The algorithm encounters an A, so it will execute this line, but the next letter is not a B, so it will not execute that line down here. Then it goes on to the next letter, and again it encounters an A, so this line here will be executed, but not this one down here, because the next le letter again is not an A. So as the algorithm progresses, it executes one extra line per letter, just as the string above. Now, finally, if the algorithm encounters A, C, A, C, A, C, what will happen is this. First, the algorithm encounters an A, so it executes this line down here, but then it does not encounter a B, so it will not go into this line. Next letter, the algorithm encounters a C, so it will not execute this line down here, and so on. I think you get the picture. So this is not one extra line per letter, but it will only be 0 0.5. So it already tells us that this string here is not a worst case string. It's something in between. Now those two strings, because they both require the same amount of time, are either both worst case or they're both something in between. Now this is something where you just have to look closely at the algorithm to see that a worst case input is, among others, one that contains as many times the letters A, B as possible, which is exactly this string. So there's no worse strings to encounter for this algorithm. So this one is a worst case input. But surprisingly, also this one down here, although it doesn't contain the sequence A, B at all, is also a worst case input. Even now that we have introduced a number of simplifications, we have introduced the RAM as a simplified computer model to count the number of time steps, and we've also said that we're just going to look at worst case running time, you see that the analysis of algorithms can still be quite tedious. It's sometimes hard to identify what exactly a worst case input will be, and even if we know the worst case input, finding the exact formula for the running time is very difficult, which is why we're going to introduce another simplification to state running time, and that simplification is known as big O notation.